interpreting IR scans for experiment 6, the hydration of styrene to 1-phenylethanol by the process of oxymercuration, demercuration. So in general, you must make assignments for the major characteristic absorption bands of the pure reagent, the pure product, and the recovered product. Now, uh, we've looked at the steps several times, so I'll just say briefly that we need to look at the molecule and write down each kind of functional group in the molecule. Then you go to the generic scan section and look for the absorption bands that are highlighted there. Then you go to the assignments table and find the correct uh, absorption band for each particular functional group that's present. And finally, uh, make those assignments on the uh, IR scan. Our reagent is styrene. Notice in styrene, the functional groups present are the monosubstituted aromatic ring, and the terminal alkene, and there are no methyl groups. Now the aromatic ring absorptions were explained and examined in the video IR scans part three, experiment four, bromination of still beans, so I won't review them here. And similarly, IR absorptions of the terminal alkene were discussed in the video IR scans part one, and I won't discuss those here again either. So here's our product, 1-phenylethanol. This is an alcohol, ethanol, and it has a phenyl group on the first carbon, so hence 1-phenylethanol. I want to make a distinction between this alcohol and a phenol, as shown here. Now, although they both have aromatic rings in them, a phenol, by definition, has the hydroxyl group right on the aromatic ring. And this hydroxyl group is not on the aromatic ring. It's on an aliphatic alkyl group. And so this is not a phenol. It's simply an alcohol. Now, we'll look at both the scans together. They're similar. So in this particular compound, 1-phenylethanol, we notice that there is a monosubstituted aromatic ring here. We have a methyl group on the end. We have no methylene groups, but we do have an OH group, a hydroxyl group. And this is the first time we're looking at a hydroxyl group, so let's explore that. So step two, the generic scans. And the upper scan is an alcohol, in this case, 1-butanol. And the lower scan is a phenol, in fact, it is the mother of all phenols. It's the compound named phenol. And they certainly have a lot of similarities. So alcohols in general, uh, most prominent band is this strong, broad uh, OH stretch that ranges between 3,400 to 3,200 and generally is centered around 3,300 wave numbers. And the very same stretch occurs in phenols, perhaps a little broader. One of the things to notice about the alcohol is that the hydroxyl peak uh, comes back toward the baseline before the 3,000 wave number mark. And if you recall, we saw hydroxyl groups in carboxylic acids previously. The hydroxyl group there uh, did not rise back toward the baseline until about 2,500. And so these methyl and methylene stretches were kind of stacked on the bottom of the hydroxyl stretch. But in, in alcohol, uh, since the hydroxyl comes up much sooner, the very what I'm saying is very easy to distinguish between the hydroxyl stretch of an alcohol compared to the hydroxyl stretch of a carboxylic acid, which is very useful. Even in the phenol, the, um, the hydroxyl stretch is approaching the baseline before any of these um, 3,000 stretches would occur if there were if there were uh, methyl and methylene groups in phenol. Also, there is a broad CO stretch between 1260 and 1,000 wave numbers, and also a, uh, an OH bend around 1420 to 1050. Uh, these have limited usefulness because of their variability in their positions. You never know exactly where to look. The 
aspect of them that makes them useful is the fact that they're broad, uh, broader than a normal carbon to carbon stretch. And they just serve as a confirmation that, in fact, yes, this is an alcohol. In this particular scan, they overlap each other. They don't necessarily always do so, but in this particular scan, they two are overlapping. If you look into the phenol down here, they are, in fact, separated. The CO stretch a little lower in um, position and the OH band a little higher and they are broader than normal carbon to carbon stretches in this region. Finally, there's a weak broad OH bend between 770 and 650 in this region and this is often not even discernible uh, particularly in an aromatic compound where there's a lot going on here but in this aliphatic we do can pick out this lazy broad stretch of an OH bend. Step three is the assignments table for alcohols and phenols, and notice they're on the same table because they are so much alike. Now, the hydroxyl group is a very polar group and is subject to a lot of hydrogen bonding, and this affects the position and shape of some of the bands. So if you were to take the, your alcohol or phenol and prepare a dilute solution in a nonpolar solvent, such as carbon tetrachloride or chloroform, it will separate the hydroxyl groups one from the other so they don't interact and they don't hydrogen bond, in which case the hydroxyl stretch actually appears as a sharp rather than a wide absorption band and it moves up to about 3600 wave numbers. However, the band grows wide and moves to a lower frequency around 3300 wave numbers when hydrogen bonding occurs and, and this happens in concentrated solutions in pure liquids, neat liquids, or in pure solids as you might see on a KBR disc. So let's take a look here. We have the hydroxyl group stretches in dilute nonpolar solvents where hydrogen bonding is not operative occur at around 3600 plus wave numbers. But when you use neat liquids or pure solids uh, then we see the typical 3300 wide absorption band. Instead of being sharp, it's quite wide as we saw. We also have the CO stretch, uh, 1260 to 1000 wave numbers, with the proviso that the position is variable and it reduces the utility of these strong bands, although they are wide, or at least medium wide, so we can pick them out. Then we have the OH in-plane bend between 1420 and 1050 with the same proviso, variable positions. And uh, 1420 is getting fairly close to some of the CH bends that might occur from the uh, methyl and methylene groups. So want to be careful of that. And finally, we have the OH out-of-plane bend at 770 to 650. Again, this is present in out liquid alcohols and, and solid phenols. It's that broad, shallow band in this range and it's often difficult to find. Notice also that any water in your sample, either contamination or water of hydration, will produce a broad OH stretch in around the 3300 wave number region. So you can be fooled sometimes thinking there's an alcohol present when it's just water. All right, so step four is for you to uh, make the assignments and fill in the data in the proper boxes. And certainly this is a busy scan. There's a lot here to look at. The alcohol is easy to pick out. Uh, evidence of aromaticity is clear. Uh, 1600, 1580, 1500, 1450. Also, we have the methyl group absorptions here, just below 3000. And again, at uh, 1460 would overlap with this 1450 band. Here are the, um, here's the OH band and the CO stretch, and we have a mono substitution pattern, so lots to, lots of you to identify. And here's the 1380, that's the unique symmetric band, umbrella band of the methyl group. So you'll have three IR scans to interpret for this lab. Pure styrene reagent, pure one phenyl ethanol product and then your recovered product. Now bear in mind that this reaction typically does not go to completion in the lab period and so in the IR scan of your recovered product look for evidence of the terminal alkene in the styrene reagent. 
in addition to the product alcohol. And that is it for experiment number six, uh, oxymercuration, demercuration, hydration of an alkene.